In the English language, there are roughly 67 different insects that have the word fly attached to their name. This video will briefly go over every single one sequentially. And there will be a big distinction between the true flies, that is the order Diptera, and every other insect that's called fly but is not a true fly. Let's begin with the true flies, that is insects from the order Diptera, which can be further separated into two groups, being the long-horned and short-horned flies, that is the Nematocera and the Brachycera. Let's begin. Starting with the Nematocera, first there is the black fly. These are named for their typically dark coloration, as fly follows the old English root while black is purely descriptive. Next are sand flies, named for their sandy habitats and coloration. The name reflects their environment rather than their taxonomy. Next are the crane flies, so-called for their long legs and awkward flight, resembling cranes. Some crane flies that look sort of fancy are called phantom flies. They're named this because their black and white coloration creates an optical illusion that makes it look like they're disappearing and appearing out of the air. Now let's get into the brachycera, that is the short horn flies. First is the horse fly, named for their habit of biting horses. Horse here is functional rather than morphological. In this group, there are many other names, but they all generally refer to the same family of biting flies. As next is the deer fly, so named because it prefers deer to horses, or the greenhead fly, referencing their metallic green eyes, a common trait among this group. There's also the clegg fly, which is just another Norse way of saying horsefly, preserved in British dialect. Next are the robber flies, so named for their predatory behavior, as they ambush and rob other insects in midair. Next would be the bee fly, so named for their fuzzy bee-like appearance, an example of Batesian mimicry reflected in their name. Next are the Midas flies, which are the largest group of flies. That is, largest in size, not number of species. They are so named after the Greek myth of King Midas, whose touch would turn anything into gold. An apt name for these large flies, as they often have very specific gold coloration, usually to mimic wasps. Next are the soldier flies. Their name refers to their banded uniform-like abdominal patterns resembling military attire. After them are the snipe flies, which are possibly named for their long legs or darting flight, but the etymology is somewhat uncertain here. Next are the stiletto flies. These guys are named after their long tapered abdomen, which somewhat resembles a stiletto dagger. After these guys are the hover flies, which also describes their characteristic ability to hover in place while flying, which they use often as these are keystone pollinators. The flower fly and drone fly are really just types of hover fly, so named because the flower fly prefers flowers and the drone fly looks like a male honeybee drone. Next are the bottle flies or blow flies, which are also more or less in the same group. Bottlefly comes from the insect's smooth, rounded, metallic body, which resembles a polished glass bottle. But the blowfly comes from the Old English blowin, meaning to swell, which is in reference to the bloated appearance of carcasses that their larvae infest. In that same vein is the fleshfly, named for their association with decaying flesh, particularly carrion. Next we have the housefly, named for its close association with human dwellings. Musca domestica literally means domestic fly. The stablefly is named for its prevalence around stables and livestock enclosures. And the facefly is named for its tendency to cluster around the faces of cattle, especially near eyes and mucous membranes. 
House flies, stable flies, and face flies are all in the family Musculae, but they are distinct species. The horn fly is not so named because it looks like it has a horn. It's named for its habit of resting near the horns of cattle when not feeding. The tachinid fly is named from the Greek word tachinos, meaning swift, referring to their quick flight or larval development. These guys also tend to have very thick, long hairs. Next is the bot fly, which comes from Middle English bot, meaning maggot or parasite, referring to their larval form rather than the adults. The bat fly comes from a series of flies that live on animals as external parasites, somewhat like lice. There's a number of these species, and they all infest different vertebrates so they tend to have different names depending on what animal they infest. Next is the drain fly or sometimes called moth fly. They are so called because they frequently appear in household drains where their larvae develop in organic biofilm. The name is purely habitat based despite appearances they are true flies and they are not moths even though they look so fuzzy. The louse fly and pigeon fly are both related to the bat fly, but are so named because the louse fly looks like a louse, and the pigeon fly is a parasite of pigeons. The fruit fly is pretty self-explanatory, but did you know that the specific species Drosophila melanogaster has won several Nobel prizes? This is because it is a model organism for lab studies and has helped push our scientific understanding in several fields. Next is the apple maggot fly, named for its larval stage or maggot which basically just infests apples. There's also the shore fly, named for their habitat along shorelines and aquatic margins, and the brine fly, so named for their ability to live and breed in highly saline, that is salty, environments. Next is the petroleum fly, named for its unique ability to survive in crude oil pools. The name is literal and habitat based. Dance fly comes from the courtship behavior of this insect. Males of the family Empididae gather in swarms and perform aerial dances while presenting prey or silk wrapped gifts. Next is the picture winged fly, named for the patterned or illustrated appearance of their wings. These are closely related to fruit flies. The scuttle fly and coffin fly are actually the same species, named for their habitat of running rapidly in short bursts rather than flying, and they also have the name coffin fly because they tend to infest buried remains and sealed coffins. Next are cheese flies, named for their larvae which infest cheese and are infamous for jumping maggots. The gall flies are so named for the plant galls that their larvae induce. Two unrelated families of flies are called March flies. They're so named for their seasonal abundance in early spring, that is March, not for shared ancestry, and it's an example of convergent common naming, as one family called March flies, that is Bibionidae, is from Europe, and another Tabanidae is from Australia. Next are the long-legged flies, which are pretty self-explanatory, as are the thick-legged flies. These are two different groups. Next are the spear-winged flies, named for their narrow pointed wings, which resemble spearheads in outline. The name emphasizes the wing shape. The stilt-legged fly is also pretty self-explanatory and also unrelated to the long-legged fly. And last of the true flies, that is the diptera, is the lance fly, named for their slender, lance-like body shape. So now that we've completed all the flies, let's go sequentially and name everything that is not a true fly, but has the word fly attached to their name. 
and on the screen I will have the order that said fly comes from. Let's begin. First are the Odonata, which are the dragonflies and damselflies. Dragonflies are so named because of how proficient they are as predators, invoking the mythic imagery of a dragon. Damselflies are related, but tend to have more slender and delicate appearance, and they're able to fold their wings upward over their body. But both of these belong to the order Odonata. In the Ephemeroptera, there are the mayflies, named for their mass emergences which typically occur in May in temperate regions. The order Plecoptera contains the stoneflies, named for their association with stones along cold, flash-flowing streams where nymphs live. These guys actually drum rocks to create vibrations to attract mates. Next is the Coleoptera, that is the beetles. And of the beetles, there's only really one which has the name fly at the end that I could find. These are the fireflies, named for their bioluminescence. They do not actually create heat when they create light. It's more of a chemical process with the use of a compound called luciferin. Next is the hymenopter, which contains the ants, bees, and wasps. Here there is two names for the same primitive insect. That is, this is the oldest extant representative of the group, which are the sawflies and horntail flies, which basically refer to the same thing. The sawfly is so named for the ovipositor the females have, which they use to cut into plant tissue. And the horntail fly is named for a similar reason, except instead of sawing, they stab their ovipositor into plant tissues. Both of these can be distinguished from the rest of the Hymenoptera because they lack a distinctive wasp waist. That's how you know you're looking at a sawfly or a horntail fly. Next is the Lepidoptera, which contains the butterflies and moths. The name butterfly has an uncertain origin. But we know the name is from the 8th to 11th centuries in England, where it was likely so named after certain species with a yellowish tint to their wings, which resembled the color of butter. Next are the snake flies from the order Raphidioptera, named for their long, flexible neck and raised posture, which resembles a snake prepping to strike. These guys are very region specific, so it's likely most people in this world haven't seen one before. In the order Mechoptera, there is the scorpion fly and the more derived hanging fly. Scorpion flies are so named for their male's upcurved genital capsule, which resembles a scorpion's tail, but they do not sting. They just superficially resemble a scorpion. The hanging fly is in the same group, and it's named for their habit of hanging from vegetation while feeding or mating. Next, from the order Megaloptera, are the alder flies, fish flies, and dobson flies, which are all closely related. The alder flies are named for their frequent association with alder trees near aquatic habitats. Fish flies are named for their abundance near water and fish habitats, not because they feed on fish, but perhaps because fish feed on them. Dobson flies are named after the British naturalist Thomas Dobson which is one of the few insect groups named after a person. From the order Neuroptera comes the owl flies, so named for their large eyes and crepuscular habits, meaning that they come out during twilight. They don't come out so much during the day or night, and this is meant to evoke owls, which are similar. The order Hemiptera contains the cicadas, the stink bugs, the aphids, and a whole host of others, and they are distinguished by a specific proboscis mouth shape, which most of them use to consume plant sap or other liquids. In this order are the white flies and lantern flies. The white flies are aphid like animals named for their white, powdery appearance, and despite the name, they are true bugs, they are not flies. The lanternfly is named for a now discredited belief that some species glowed, and the name persists despite being incorrect. Some of these are very invasive in the United States. 
Lastly are the caddis flies. The word caddis likely comes from an old term for woven fabric or ribbon, referencing the larval cases they construct. Now that we've completed this list, understand that this actually just scratched the surface and was only the very broad names, in that there are so many flies which are specialized to a specific plant or a specific host, and when this happens, very specific common names can appear, which are sometimes used for just one species of insect. So for this video, I tried to be as broad as possible, but feel free in the comments to let me know any flies you think I missed. Especially if said fly is not a true fly that is coming from the order Diptera. That being said, thanks for watching this episode of Privileged Bug Facts. Stay tuned for more bug content just like this. Thanks.